Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. The Apple Vision Pro is here, and there's two questions that I just keep getting over and over again. Very simply, what is it? And what is it for? Like, what do you do with this thing? Two seemingly easy questions to answer, but they're kind of not because the Apple Vision Pro is not what you think. We're also gonna touch on two very big problems that I see with the Apple Vision Pro. Now, first up, what is this new goggle headset from Apple that we're seeing people walk down the street with, riding the subways with, flailing their arms like a budget Tony Stark? It is the Apple Vision Pro, Apple's first foray into the world of AR. AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality. And the Apple Vision Pro is supposedly an AR headset, which yes, but, Apple has specifically not called it that. They call it the era of spatial computing is here. Spatial computing because it's not augmented reality. Something that I see a lot of people confusing on this headset is that it is not actually passed through. In the videos that you see, you see like right now, I can see everything in this studio. I can see my desk. I can see the camera. I can see everything around me, but then I can also see a couple of windows that I have floating in the air. But the Apple Vision Pro, it's not passed through, meaning that when you put them on and you're seeing the world around you as it is, as real as it does feel, you are seeing that world through the cameras on the front of the device. And that live video feed is then being delivered to your eyes by two 4K screens, like little teeny tiny screens, but they are both 4K, one for each eyeball. But the fact that it's not a pass-through headset means that technically, this is still a VR headset that's doing a really good job of pretending to be an AR headset. But I don't see a lot of people mentioning that it does still look like a video feed. If you look around, there's a bit of like dancing video noise in the shadows. There's some blur with the bouncing of motion. If you walk down the street, like you see people doing, you definitely see the whole world kind of do, do every time you take a step. And you can tell that it's cameras because as you look around, you can see the cameras adjusting the exposure. So if I'm in my living room, I'm watching something and I quickly look over at the bright windows, I see that kind of exposure rack happening where it's really bright and then it goes and it fixes the exposure. Your eyeballs do that very quickly, very naturally, but cameras, it takes a moment for them to rack exposure. And especially if you're standing outside, if you look up at the sky and then look kind of back down, even in here right now, I have a very bright light. If I look at that light, I see the exposure dim. And if I look back down at my desk, it gets brighter again. And then lastly on here, what reminds you that you're very much in goggles is there's, there's quite a tunnel effect. Like it kind of looks like you're looking through your hands about like this. So if I was sitting here and I wanted to look at something right here, I have to turn my head. I cannot currently see, I cannot currently see my hands in my periphery. To see my hands right now, I have to turn my entire head to, to get that kind of tunnel to, to look at it. Which is why, by the way, guys, don't go driving with this on. I've seen, I know it's like a funny thing to go do, go driving, go skateboarding, go ride your bike, and it, you can totally get away with it. It's that good that you can get away with it, but, you shouldn't. Now that aside, the point of this headset is to bring these digital windows into your actual world. And when you're looking at those bright and crisp windows floating magically in the air, and as I grab a window and I hover it over my desk, I actually see the shadow on my desk. It all feels very real. The magic trick is in full effect and you cannot help but enter this world and just look around and go, <laughs> get out of here, dude. Any 2D representation of this experience that you've seen or that I show you in this video, it does it no justice. The feeling of being in the Apple Vision Pro world, it is overwhelmingly good. I keep telling people that this is the best experience that I've had with any technology in my entire life. And that's saying a lot, I use a lot of technology. I've of course been giving all my friends and neighbors demos to see their reactions and every person has been absolutely blown away. Morgan did the dinosaur experience, a few of my neighbors have done the dinosaur experience, and the dinosaur comes out into your living room. Morgan, Morgan absolutely lost it. And I had so much fun watching her go through this experience that again, feels a lot like a magic trick. How you move windows in space by just looking at the small white bar below it, pinching your fingers together, and then moving it around the room, putting it on in, I can see a shadow below it right now on my desk. This makes no sense. It feels very real, it feels insanely futuristic, but oddly natural using 
the pinch and using your eyes to kind of move the cursor, if you will, and then using your fingers to pinch to click the cursor or click the mouse, if you will. It feels like this is how you should interact with this environment. Again, Apple kind of nailing the input device methods. They're the ones that came up with the mouse in the first place. They're the ones that came up with pinch to zoom. Technically, I mean, kind of, there's a whole story behind that. But this experience, this looking at something, tracking your eyeballs, there's a bunch of sensors in there that are looking where my eyeballs are looking to know exactly where I'm looking, which is insanely accurate. And then when I wanna click something, I just look at it, I pinch my fingers and I've, I've selected it. In so many ways on this AR VR headset, they have absolutely nailed it. Now, lastly, in the like, what is this thing section, a couple of things that people online have gotten very wrong. One is the battery. The battery pack is something that you put in your pocket. The cord runs up, uses this proprietary connection, and it clicks into the headset. That takes a lot of the weight off of the headset and puts it in your pocket. Now, people complained because this was not a detachable cable connection, but it actually, it actually is because it would be super annoying if this did not detach because imagine if you like tore up this cable or you broke this cable in some way, you damaged the cable. Imagine this entire $200 battery just being dead. That would be silly. There's a pinhole right next to the cable. You press that with like a SIM tool device and uh, cable pops right out. You get this kind of like fat lightning connector looking thing, which again is also proprietary, but push that back in and uh, you're back to business. So locking on this side and, and locking on this side. So the battery is locked on both sides just to prevent it from accidentally just pulling out. If it was just USB-C, you pop that out, all of a sudden your headset goes blank when you're in the middle of a, a whole experience. So I totally get that. I will say though, about 30 minutes into using this, I had the battery in my pocket like I do right now, and my daughter was inside. She was yelling for help inside. Daddy, help me. I took off the headset, I put it on my desk, and I ran, and I yanked the headset off the desk onto my concrete floor. Oh, no! I dropped him. Holy cow. And that would have, that would have sucked. That would have absolutely shattered these goggles. Had it not been for the absurd amount of packaging that came with them, I had taken, I'd unboxed it here. I was gonna make an unboxing video, decided not to unbox it here. I took all the packaging and I put them on a pile on the floor right next to me. And when I, I ripped the goggles off, they landed on that pile of paper and cardboard and plastic. And uh, <laughs> saved my goggles, near disaster. Now, the other thing that you're gonna hear people say about this headset is that it's heavy. And yes, that's true, but compared to other VR headset, it's not heavy at all, especially the fact that this headset is so much more advanced than those other headsets, and it still only weighs about 625 grams. To put that in perspective, the VR headsets from Meta, the MetaQuest Pro and the MetaQuest 3. The MetaQuest 3 comes in at 515 grams, very nice and lightweight, and the MetaQuest Pro comes in at 722 grams. So this is kind of between the weights of the MetaQuest 3 and the MetaQuest Pro, and a lot of that is because they took the battery and they put it on a cable so you can have that weight in your pocket. The battery, the battery does have some heft to it. But overall the headset, it's something you will get used to. The first day that I used it, I was like, ooh, this is heavy. After maybe an hour or so, I thought I should take a break from this thing for a little while so I don't get a headache. But now I'm on day three, I'm like three hours into using it today and no problems at all. It feels very comfortable even with even with the knit band. This dual style band has kind of one that goes behind your head, one that goes over your head. This is much more comfortable, just a little more inconvenient to size. So this one you kind of got to put on and do this strappy bit each time. And with this solo knit band, you just twist this like, you know, boa, like when you have cool snowboard boots and you just twist the boa. It's very boa-esque. I'm kind of surprised they got away with using something like that because it feels like boa has a solid little patent lawsuit on their hands. Okay, so VR headset that's acting like an AR headset really, really well. But again, what is it for? Like, what am I actually going to use this for? As my, my buddy CJ put it, can you see yourself ever actually doing productive work inside this headset? And the answer is yes, just not yet. 
there is a very cool feature where you can look at your Apple laptop. It knows this is my laptop. It knows this is my headset. And right above my Apple laptop, a little bubble pops up and it says connect. All I do is look at that bubble. I click my fingers together and now my laptop screen goes black and a giant screen pops up floating in midair. So I had a 16 inch laptop and now it's like a 60 inch laptop even if I was just sitting at a coffee shop or riding on a bus or in an airplane. And that is super useful because next to that main screen that I'm I'm sitting there working on, I can also click my digital crown here and I could pull up my messages floating next to that. I could pull up Safari window next to that. I can pull up lots of different windows. You could have all sorts of windows all around you and really feel very Tony Stark-esque. But one note here is that the screen that kind of emerges from your laptop, now it's floating in the air, you can't interact with that with the Vision Pro with your fingers or your eyes as an input device. That device, that screen right there can only receive input from the keyboard and the trackpad on your computer. And then everything around it can only receive input from your eyes and your fingers. So if I'm working on this main screen, maybe I'm editing a video using my keyboard and trackpad and then I look over at my messages, I can't just click and then start typing on my computer keyboard and input text into the iMessages. I have to look over, click, and now I'm gonna pull up that digital keyboard where I can either click the microphone and voice text or sit there and individually select keys. So yes, the laptop screen getting giant, it is super helpful and I can imagine one day maybe editing videos on it. I, I haven't tried it yet. I, I got in there for maybe 20, 30 minutes and my eyes started getting tired. That is one thing you'll notice is that having to use your eyeballs as a cursor, it gets a little wearing on you. One thing that is super sweet about that though is, is privacy. Imagine sitting in the aisle seat working on your laptop. There's like 15 people up and down the aisle that can see whatever you're working on. So whether it's emails or a video or maybe some photos that you're working on, everyone can see what you're doing. But now you pop these on, you connect to your laptop, the screen becomes virtual, your laptop screen goes completely black, and now, now nobody can see what you're working on. You just look like a crazy person typing away on a laptop with a, a totally blank screen. Other than that though, the productivity features, they're just not there yet. I think those will come when we start to see more apps brought onto the App Store, more use cases developed for this relatively new spatial computing category. And right now it's it's mostly an entertainment device. And for that, it does it extremely well. Whether you're sitting on a park bench watching a Marvel movie on a 40 foot screen, or you're completely immersed in one of Apple's TV experiences that have been designed specifically to highlight the spatial feel that this device can give you. You feel like you are there in the room with with Alicia Keys, she's doing this whole recording thing. It it looks wild. The entertainment factor on here is, is high. If you are by chance a photographer like me, looking at my photos on this has probably been the best experience so far. Like seeing my photos on a 20 foot screen and it's bright and it's vivid and it's beautiful. It's kind of the best way that I've ever viewed my own work. And even though I haven't shot many of them in the past, panoramas are a wild experience on here. You open a panorama and you go full immersive and it wraps around you. And now instead of just looking at a panorama like this, you're looking, you're looking at a panorama like that you are in that photo. Again, it is it is wild. Okay, my two big gripes. Hey, before I get to my gripes about the Apple Vision Pro, let me tell you something I've never had gripes with. Squarespace. If you somehow don't already know about Squarespace, they are the all-in-one website building platform that I have used for the past 10 years for my photography business. I got started with Squarespace because it was super easy to set up, easy to take one of their professionally designed templates, swap in my content, and boom, I, I had a dope website. And I am somebody that didn't know how to make a website and still does not know how to make a website, but I, I have a dope website because of Squarespace. And now with their fluid engine design system, it's even easier than ever before. It's all just drag and drop and customize to your little heart's desire. Make your website exactly what you want it to be. When you are ready to take your web presence to the next level, head to the first thing in the description and go to squarespace.com for a totally free trial. Get access to all of Squarespace's tools. See all the possibilities that are in there. And when you are ready to go live, use code David Manning for 10% off at checkout. A dope website and you save a bit of money. Okay, back to back to my gripes with the Apple Vision Pro. Here's the two big ones. Number one, the Apple Vision Pro, it's very isolating. It's a one person device right now. So while you're sitting in this world and all these windows are magically floating, you're having this just unbelievable experience. 
my, my wife is sitting on the couch next to me, not sharing anything of what I'm experiencing. And even if she did have her own $4,000 headset, we currently cannot share the same experience. So we could each be in our own little worlds, having our own experiences, but we have no way of, of sharing that experience. And this is one of the first things that I hope Apple addresses. If they could make it so that two or three or, or 10 people all wearing Apple Vision Pros could link together in the same shared experience to watch a movie or play a game, then I can see how this sort of thing becomes more and more used because again, right now it is just a by yourself device and hopefully soon Apple will make it a, a shared experience device. I, I get lonely in here. Number two now is the exclusion of their number one product and that is it's the iPhone. See, anytime I'm working on my computer, I have a little dock for my iPhone because there's certain things that are just better on my iPhone, certain apps that are only on my iPhone, and I want to use those while working for hours on my computer. And with the Apple Vision Pro, looking down an alert on your iPhone or trying to use your iPhone at all, it's a pretty terrible experience right now. It's honestly better to just lift up the headset, address whatever alert popped up on your iPhone, do whatever you need to do on your iPhone, and then put the headset back on. Sometimes though, I've had it where I had a bunch of stuff going on, I lifted the headset for too long, and when I put it back on, it kind of thought this was a new session, and everything, everything went away. And I think the solution to this is fairly simple, and it seems even more intuitive than the whole connect to your laptop thing, and that is, let me make my iPhone a virtual window in this experience. Your iPhone is already a touch input device by touching and tapping on things, which this is essentially recreating, is looking to, to move and then clicking to touch whatever I'm, I'm trying to click. So let me look down at my iPhone, say connect to my iPhone, and then give me a window here where I can use my eyes and my hands to, to actually work on my iPhone, a virtual version of my iPhone in midair. Now this would seemingly also take away the big load that a lot of these apps are gonna have to take to develop apps that are specifically designed for the Apple Vision Pro. If I could just use my phone like I use my phone, but in the air here, I could swipe through my screens, I could click into an app, I could scroll Instagram just by sitting here doing this. It seems like that would be a much more intuitive way to have my phone nearby, have my computer nearby, and be able to input and interact with these different devices without having to take off the headset because I got a pop-up that sums up my front door on my security camera and I cannot see it at all. It looks terrible. The real world looks pretty good through these, but screens, screens do not. Please Apple, give me a virtual way to interact with the things that are on my iPhone, but while I, I can stay in this AR, VR world. Again though, the Apple Vision Pro is the greatest experience that I've ever had with technology. And this is the first generation. Imagine generation five or six or 10 and the world of apps that we will have at our fingertips or our, our eyes. At our eyes? I mean, kind of fingertips. Okay, that is it for today. Plenty more videos coming on the Apple Vision Pro. Your questions, your comments, leave them down below. I will get to them here on YouTube or over on Instagram. And yeah, I'll uh, I'll see you in the metaverse or Appleverse, whatever, whatever they're gonna call their verse. I'll see you soon. What do you think? Very cool. <laughs> is it the coolest thing ever? No. <laughs> Just kind of cool. Just kind of cool? All right, that's fair.